Good morning, my friends, and welcome to worship here at Covenant United Methodist Church. My name is Ann Kemper. I'm the pastor here at Covenant, and today I'm joined by Reverend Mark Van Krieger, who is going to um, co-preach with me today, and I really appreciate it. I was grateful enough to, um, rather than like send him a check, I gave him a bottle of Dorothy Lynch salad dressing. Now, if you don't know what Dorothy Lynch salad dressing, it's Nebraska's best kept secret. So Amazon should be able to help you out with that if you want to give it a shot. This morning, happy Father's Day to all of you. And I know this is both a tender day and a very special day. And so we welcome all fathers um, here and online. This, today we look at scripture. Um, it's going to be very familiar where they, uh, the disciples and Jesus set sail and the seas get rough and the disciples get scared and wake up Jesus and um, a miraculous thing happens. And so we're going to look at that, kind of bouncing that back and forth, but hopefully being able to um, reflect in a way that uh, makes it very real for us today. We begin worship um, very appropriately with a post prelude called Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. I'm hanging on to this like it's a second appendage. Um, <laughs> if I can get like the mask. Um, I meant to say, as we, I welcomed you all to worship. As you all know, we're just in this once again. You know, we don't know what the rules are. And with annual conference this last week, I really didn't have a chance to dissect all the replies of opinions I got from people. So what we're going to do. Um, is going to ask uh, that you wear the mask when you come into the building. Once you're seated, feel free. It's warm. Uh, there's water on the back table. And as long as you feel comfortable socially distanced from folks, um, we'll be fine. We are going to be singing the last hymn together, It Is Well With My Soul. So we just ask that you put your masks back on until we finally come to terms with this. It's a... Um, it has come, become for me, um, I just feel safer with it on. So everybody's comfort level is different, but that's where we are so far. So with that in mind, let us pray this call to worship. 
The spirit drifts over the face of the deep. And though the wind rises and the sea swells, the spirit is at rest. Let us worship the spirit in silence. For, For a, a voice upon the water whispers, whispers be still and know that I am God. The Spirit leads us from chaos to calm, and though we fear the wind and dread the sea, the Spirit restores our souls. Let us us worship the Spirit in strength, for a voice upon the water speaks, be not afraid, it is I. Lord, you have come to the lake shore. Lord, you have come to the lake shore. Good morning, Marvin. Good morning, Anne. Good morning, saints. Good morning, sinners. Good morning, morning, children of God. (laughs) Well, we continue this day with the Gospel of Mark. We continue from last week's scripture lesson with regard to where we looked at what parables were all about, and then that was followed by two parables dealing with God's kingdom and also reflecting and sharing really about faith, yes, the faith in God. So now we hear and have had this event shared with us. This event puts those two parables to test. Yes. Across the Galilean Sea, they travel. In reality, if you look at the Galilean Sea, it actually looks like a lake, just a very large lake. However, you have to remember that this lake has the audacity to build up waves all of a sudden. So therefore, they journeyed out, and then the sea woke. Mm. Why (laughs) not? I have to add, there is some unique characteristics about Mark. I think we've been referring to him as terse and pithy. Mark actually devotes less space in his Gospels to parables and more space to miracles, healings, exorcisms, and the testing of one's faith. And so Mark clearly prioritizes actions over words. And as Marvin said, today's scripture focus is on faith. I think in the King James Version that I grew up with, O ye of little faith. Faith, as we know, is that patience in dark times, um, trusting that uh, Christ's light will shine. Faith strengthens when sea billows roll and the storms of life are raging. Faith helps us in a global pandemic. And I'm going to confess with you that, um, oh, I'd say a good two years, maybe more, before the shutdown, um, I thought the seas were very calm, and I loved it. There was no real tension. There was no conflict. 
uh, we were, it was smooth sailing, and I got real comfortable with that. And when the shutdown hit, um, I was scared. And I don't think I was alone, but all I could think is, um, how are we going to do this? How are we going to keep going when we can't meet for worship? So Margaret Scott helped me, kind of lift me out of that. And in retrospect, um, I was the one at the stern of the boat shaking Jesus awake. Don't you care that we're perishing? And um, so I confess that because I, I did let my faith lapse. And it was just um, a good lesson for me and not one, not to take advantage of when the sailing is smooth, but also to know that um, when the storms of life are raging, um, Jesus stands by me and stands by us all. And so today we prioritize action over words. And what does that mean for us in, in our context? How do we make actions embellish? words. And Jesus embarks on this sail to the other side of the lake in search of those answers. Barbara Bruce, a friend of Marvin's and mine, and many of you I know know her, wrote a book several years ago called The Seven Ways of Teaching the Bible to Children. And she identified seven learning styles, verbal, logical, which never works for me, visual, body, kinesthetic, musical, interpersonal, and intrapersonal. And in today's lesson, this story put to action, I think is Jesus' way of using that kinesthetic learning style, learning by doing something physically. What do you think? I think you're probably right. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can argue with I me. Agree. I agree. <laughs> the reality is that, you know, um, here I said that I would throw you off, and you kind of threw me off. But that's all right. <laughs> one for you. Okay. Uh, this is one of my favorite passages. Uh, the reality is why I love this passage is because I love water, I think. I think. Oh. I'm a Pisces. Oh, I am not. <laughs> and so I do love water. I've always loved water. I love swimming. I love getting my feet wet. I love getting my entire body wet and being out there. Now, remember that Anne said earlier, and also last week it was mentioned, and the week before that, when she introduced that Mark was terse, pissy, pithy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, and to the point. Yes. Does not being to the point, we have to remember that everything that Mark puts into his stories have meaning, and there is a reason why they're put there. Now, one of the things when I was reading this over this time in my life was that there were other boats oh. who were following. Yeah. It wasn't just the boat that Jesus and the disciples were in. It was other boats also coming along for the ride. So therefore, when the sea breaks out, and all of a sudden the disciples get upset, they get anxious, it is not just happening to them. Right. It is happening also to the other boats. But the disciples had one up on the other boats. Who'd they have in the back? Jesus. Jesus. Now, here we have Jesus sleeping. Mark also tells us not only was he sleeping in an uncomfortable back of a boat, he actually had a cushion <laughs> a pillow. to put his head on. Think about it. Don't you like a nice, soft cushion to put your head on when you get to sleep? Mm -hmm. 
And here Jesus is nice and comfortable, relaxing. It was a hard day sharing the parables about faith and God's kingdom. And how faith leads to God's kingdom not only in the afterlife but also here and present. Here and now. All of a sudden the storms are coming in. How many times has a storm hit you when you think things are going smoothly, as you said? Right. Going smoothly, and all of a sudden a storm hits, interrupting the goal that you set for yourself. Don't, or haven't you, actually said to yourself or out loud, God, why are you allowing this to happen to me? Why me? Mm-hmm. Why not somebody else who doesn't and hasn't tried to live a good life? Why me? That's what the disciples are saying. Why are you allowing us to get overwhelmed? And like the disciples who shout, Teacher, don't you care that we are going to drown? But what about the other boats? Shouldn't they be saying, what about us? What about them? Please, let us look beyond ourselves. Let us look to the world to ask Jesus for help. To guide us, to allow that spirit to become one with us. When we are in turmoil, Oftentimes, those individuals around us are also in turmoil. Yes. If you haven't listened to Christina's sharing on this past Monday, this past Monday, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This past Monday, do so. Because she shares with us the turmoil that was in somebody else's life allow the turmoil to happen to her. Because she cared for those other people, the turmoil that was happening to them also became her turmoil. Until she allowed God's faith Mm -hmm. to take and to redirect her away from those waves and that turmoil and struggle of life. Reality. Mm -hmm. The reality Want me to go on? (laughs) I only have a few more points. Okay. You got me hooked. (laughs) The other thing is that here they are in this boat, swamped. All of a sudden, here comes the disciples. Here I am, or Jesus, snoozing in the back. All of a sudden, they wake up. They wake them up, thinking about themselves. Wake up, Jesus. Now, listen, he didn't have his coffee. So, but he still woke up, turned to them, and first of all, rebukes the sea. Mm -hmm. Calm down. Mm -hmm. Calm down. You've had enough. We've had enough. And when we can get one part of our lives settled and calmed down, then we can look at the other part of living. Living in a new way, in a new direction, moving forward in life. Part of the reality of God's presence with us. A promise. Does Jesus turn to us and say, What? Mm -hmm. Where is your faith? Mm -hmm. Why? didn't you have the faith that I have been sharing with you? Have faith that the turmoil will end. And as we look forward to a new tomorrow, a calming of the sea, as many of us take and remove our masks because we've been vaccinated, we have new hope and a new promise of life to come. 
be still and know that I am with you. And he is mm -hmm. with all of us. Absolutely. And the seas will be calm. And that's not what I had. <laughs> well, there, there was a, a little comment that I made last week that I just want to elaborate on because I think it will play into not only today's lesson, but in going forward as we work our way through Mark. And I said that I had read somewhere that the Gospels are um, God's parable to us. That the parables can be interpreted in so many different ways. Um, there's little bits of treasure scattered throughout. Uh, it, they're master storytellers. But if we think of it and just kind of entertain this thought for a moment, that God is telling us a parable through the life and ministry of Jesus. And so what we see oftentimes um, is often revealed and concealed at the same time. But the way to revealing the richness and the more um, elaborate understanding where each time you read it, you can put, pull something else out of it is through the lens of faith. And it's when we have that faith lens that we begin to interpret these parables and these stories and these experiences of Jesus, it's as though God is speaking to us in a parable, explaining it through our life, life experience, and also through Jesus' explanation and other scripture in the Bible. We have the advantage in that we are not the clueless disciples in the boat um, who don't know the punchline. We know the punchline and that we are Easter people and who go forth by faith, putting those words into action. Now, does that mean the boat is not going to get rocky and that winds won't come up and toss us about? But just remember, one, it is too sweet to trust in Jesus. And also, he is in the boat with us. Hmm. I like that. Jesus is God's parable to us. This is why the humanness of Jesus is so important. Yeah. Rather than always looking at the messiahship, the Christ, we also need to look at the humanness of Jesus, if this is God's parable to us. Therefore, we can look at that humanness and adopt it for our own living. Amen. This has been great. I I've enjoyed this. It's taken both of us out of our comfort zones. It certainly <laughs> has. Me more than you. <laughs> the reality of life. That's right. The sea is calm. Yeah. Shall we pray? Let us pray. Open your hearts and your spirits and your presence to be at one with God and allow God to be with you. Allow him to surround you, to enfold you, to encapsulate you, to calm your seas as we move in prayer. Source of all being, which we emulate this day as we celebrate those individuals that we call Father, mm -hmm. those people in our lives who strive to do your will and reflect the presence of your Son, Jesus the Christ, we turn to you as did our people in ancient days. They beheld you in the heavens. They felt you in their hearts. They sought you in their lives. They witnessed the calming of the seas throughout centuries. Their quest is ours. Help us to see the wonder of being. 
Give us the courage to search for truth even when it may disturb us. Teach us a path to a better life. So shall we, by our lives and our labors, bring nearer the word and the world we envision. One of justice, one of freedom, and one of peace. Peace for all people, no matter our race, religion, sexual orientation, and even our cultural differences. We come to you with the burning of your spirit within us, as on that day of Pentecost, which we celebrated just a few weeks ago. May that spirit truly give the healing and the caring power of your love. We behold our hearts this day and care for those individuals whom we share allow. We pray for the goddaughters of Annie. We pray for Abigail and Kalaba Malenga from Zambia, who are seriously ill with COVID. Mm -hmm. This is a reminder that we still must be mindful that COVID still exists in this world. And we continue to pray for those that we have contract, who have contracted this disease and pray for the continuation of vaccination throughout the world for those individuals who have not had the access as we. We pray for Morley who continues to recover from a stroke. We pray for the family and friends of Elizabeth who recently died of pancreatic cancer mm. after suffering so many other illnesses and hardships within her life. We open our hearts to those who continue to live with terminal illness such as cancer, HIV, Alzheimer's, and others. We pray for Emily's family friend, George, who is undergoing cancer treatment, and also her uncle Scott, also going through chemotherapy for lung cancer. Lord, we now open our hearts so that within them we can share at this moment in silence those people that we hold dear personally. Lord, we thank you for the ability to calm seas mm -hmm. and allow us a new freedom and a new hope for a world yet to be in your loving kindness. Amen. Our offering um, this week, again, uh, it's amazing the variety of ways uh, that the gifts come in. Especially, I would like to thank, especially in the, in the newsletter, this last newsletter, there was an envelope in there for the uplift renovation. And the response has really been overwhelming. And so thank you for those, those gifts. Bashir, if you want to bring up the offering, that would be great and we will bless it. There are, um, our blessing box shelf is a little uh, bare, so if anyone has things to share that um, would be helpful for other people, that would be wonderful. Bashir, thank you very much. Are you thank feeling you, better this week? Are you feeling, good. All right, great. We like to hear that. So let us pray a blessing upon the gifts. Holy and loving God, you have graced us with many gifts and many blessings, and we thank you for that. And as um, appreciation, we just turn around and offer back to you our thanks, our praise, our sacrificial giving, because it is to your glory and to the work done here on this planet that we give you all thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Our announcements uh, covenant table continues to operate on Mondays, 4.30 to 6. And uh, so if you have a neighbor, a friend, come on down. It's a takeout meal. You can just come in, pick it up. It's always delicious. Um, I think we've probably stopped saying what the menu is because it hasn't been the same. I guess they arrive and say, oh, let's do this. And it's always very good. Marvin mentioned last Monday's interview with uh, Christina Parker on our Monday 7 o'clock um, reflection on the rock. And this week, tomorrow, Bruce McDaniel is sharing about the book that he wrote um, about his spiritual journey uh, being a, um, a medic during the Vietnam War. And it's, it's a beautiful insight and into that experience. Um, Muriel, I mentioned this a, a couple weeks ago, Muriel, and I know many of you know her, um, needs to get outside and just walk around. What, what it is, honestly, Cheryl was explaining it to me, is she's in a walker and the way that her door goes out from her building, she can't hold it open and get the walker out and then keep it open as she negotiates down the steps. And then just someone to keep her company as she walks maybe around the parking lot and comes back in. Two times a week would be wonderful if a couple different people to call her and set that time up. It would just be a wonderful way to put faith in action. And, uh, and I know Muriel would appreciate it. Oh. <laughs> okay. This... Um, I'm glad Chris is singing this, because I, yeah, cause I, I know I couldn't make it through. But this is a, a very tender hymn about what it means when we walk with Jesus, what it means when we um, have that faith that allows um, Jesus to be in the boat with us and calm the storms in our heart, because we know in our hearts it is well with my soul. So I invite you to stand, mask if you're able, and... We will sing together, It Is Well With My Soul. Praise the Lord, praise. 
Christ is with us. Even when the seas get rough and our boats rock, Jesus is in the boat with us. Mm -hmm. And so we go forth by faith. And we will save our congregational amen until after the postlude. I invite you to be seated. Thank you. 
And together the people of God say, Amen. Amen.